Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to add and configure admin in your Roblox game. Okay, so admin is a really important part of your Roblox game. If you're making a roleplay game, if you're making an admin house game, any type of game, if you want administrator privileges for you and your staff members, you want to have an admin command script. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to add and configure the basic admin admin commands, but you can use any admin commands you like. Uh, and most of them are set up the same, so you can take this tutorial and use it on other admin commands. So to insert the basic admin model to our game, all we're going to do is we're going to come over to the toolbox and we're just going to type basic admin essentials. And that's just the name of the admin that we'll be using. If we just click right here on the model, it'll insert it into our game. And as you see, all we have to do is extend this. And I'm actually just going to leave this in the model underneath the workspace. But you could put this wherever you want. You could put this under server script service. You could put it in server storage. As long as it's in a place that's accessible by the server, you can load the admin right there. So now if we actually head into the script, this is where we can do our configuration for the admin. So maybe we want a custom message when people use the m command. Or maybe we want only certain admin levels to be able to use certain commands. Well, we can do this by configuring the admin. And this is how the configuration is set up. So it says local configuration, and then we have this array right here with all these separate arrays that contain all the super admins, admins, mods, group configuration, all that. So let's say we want to add a super admin. Maybe my, maybe my Roblox username is Bob, and I want uh, maybe Joe to have super admin. So the way I would do that is underneath this super admin thing right here, I would just tab in two times, and then I would do a left square back bracket, and then that auto fills with a right square bracket. I do the number, their user ID. So let's say Bob's user ID was one, two, three, four, five. Then we just type one, two, three, four, five right there. And then we just say equals, and then we do the username, because his name is Bob. Now, the reason we have to put the user ID is because if the user for some reason changes their name, we still want that user to have admin. So that's why we specify both the user ID and the uh, Roblox name, because it'll double check each other. Uh, and then after this, if you want to add another user, you just put a comma, and then you press enter to create a new line in the script, and then you can do the same thing for your next user. So we can do square brackets again, Maybe this user's user ID is 54321, uh, and then we say equals, and then in the string, in the quotes, we give their username, so maybe this time we want Joe to be super admin, uh, and then you do that for all of them. So maybe if you want to have some of them admins, some mods, anybody that you want to be banned from your game, you just put them in here. Now there are ways to do it through the game. You can run a command that says super admin the username but that might not necessarily save it. So when the server shuts down and a, a new server pop up, pops up, the, that user won't be admin anymore. So it's really important that you do it in this script for anybody that you trust and that's you want a permanent admin or permanently banned or anything like that. Now, this is great, but what if we want a whole role in a group to be admin? So the way we do that is by using this group configuration panel right here. And so the first parameter we do is the group ID. So maybe my group ID is one, two, three, four, five, and that can be found in the URL of your group page. And now we want to type the minimum rank that the player should get admin. So let's say we want all interns in our group to get admin. If the intern role ID that we specified is equal to 15, then we'd say 15 right here and then it says greater than or equal to. So anybody in our group that has a rank greater than or equal to 15, greater than or equal to intern, will have the admin level zero, right? So that's, let's see, what is admin level zero? So if we look up here, it actually does give comments. It says what the different admin types are. So zero is no admin, one is mod, two is admin, and three is super admin. So if we want our interns to have mod, we do the admin level one. If we want them to have admin, then we do admin level two. And if we want them to have super admin, then we do admin level three. 
and all of these different tiers of admins have different commands. So maybe like in mod you'll have a few administrative privileges but you don't have everything just because you're not fully trusted yet. But when you get up to super admin you have almost all the commands so you can ban people, kick them, you can do anything, any administrative privilege you have. Um, now over here we also have the command configuration. Now this allows us to set certain commands in basic admin to a specific permission. So as you see as an example right here they have fly and unfly and they set the permission to one which once again one is the mod uh, admin rank but maybe we want to only let people fly if they're admins right if there are certain if they got the rank admin by a being up here, being inserted, or we're a rank in the group, then we want them to have the fly permission. So to do that, we would just change this number to whatever the role type is, whatever the name of that admin type is. So permission two, that means permission admin. And every time we'd want to add another one of these, all we do is we copy this right here from this left bracket to this comma, and then we create a new line under this, and then we paste it we put the command name right here inside of these quotes so maybe I want people to be able to use the M command and then in here right here as I said earlier this is the admin ID so maybe if I want mods to be able to use the M command I can say one now there are a bunch of defaults that are set for this I don't think we can view them right now but there are a bunch of defaults and for the most part they make sense if you have a cafe group or a roleplay group you probably want your MRs to have rank one mod you want your HRs to have admin too, and you want your super HRs, your owners, your board members, all those people, you want them to have admin rank three super admin. Now, all of this is awesome, but uh, basic admin actually goes even further into letting us configure all of the messages that can get shown on our screen. So these are just some of the other configuration fields. So prefix, so by default, when you go into the game, and you want to run an admin command, you type colon and then the admin command. So if I wanted to ban someone, I'd say colon ban and then their username. But what we can do is we can configure this even further and put our own prefix in there. So maybe if we want people to use the semicolon instead of the colon, or we want people to use the dot, or we want people to use the tilde, or any other admin or any other character as our prefix, we can do that so that the players can, you know, we can choose so that the players can have the optimal experience for our game. Now, this also allows us to configure the kick reason. Maybe if we want to kick somebody, you know, and they don't specify a message, the admin doesn't specify the reason for the kick, you could say, you have been kicked or you can put any message you want inside of these single quotes right here. Ban reason, same thing. If somebody doesn't specify a ban reason uh, when they ban a user from the game, you could say, you have been slain by the ban hammer, right? Or you could put your custom message in there. Uh, sh shutdown message, so whenever a server is shut down, this is the default message that comes up on the player's screens. So maybe instead of saying this server is shutting down, you could say this server is shutting down for an update. Please rejoin. Or you could say something like that. Server message, whenever somebody runs the colon SM command or whatever your prefix is, SM, this will come up. So the, basically the name of the little blue box that will come down if you're familiar with basic admin, that's specified right here. So maybe if you were maybe your group is the row scripter group. I could say row scripter server message or I can configure that to say whatever I want. So I could say special message, I could say admin message, I could say anything, but it's just important that it's inside of these quotes right here. Same thing with the server lock reason, when the server is locked, you can change that. Trello, this basically allows you to get ranks from Trello and it allows you to store bands on Trello. Um, along with the data stores. I won't get into that because it's a little bit more complex, but if you are familiar with Trello, uh, the Furry Fish has some pretty good instructions here that are self-explanatory on how to set that up. Um, again, the Trello board, Trello app key, all this Trello stuff, you can check that out if you have a chance. Um, creator debugging, this allows us to look at you know issues with the admin and it gives us prints to the console and we can see if there's an issue. 
I just say set it to true because it's easier, you know, to fix things if they're broken. Um, donor parks, whatever this value is set to, false. If it's set to false, then people who purchase the basic admin donor game pass, or actually, I think it's a, a t-shirt. Actually, if people purchase the t-shirt, then they will get admin commands in the game if this is set to true. And it's just fun commands. It's just like sparkles and nothing that will do harm to other people. But you might want not want that enabled. So you just set that to false if you don't want people to have that kind of thing. Um, public commands. I think there are around five or six public commands uh, that like allow players to check their ping or they can do clean or they can do all these other um, public commands. But they really don't do any harm. So I suggest keeping that on true. Um, Auto clean, will the gear and your hats be cleaned up every so often? Again, this is just the default, you can set this to whatever you'd like. The system color, basically the way we can configure the system color is by default, basic admin sets the system color to like a light gray color, but maybe we want it to be blue instead. So the way we can select our color is creating a new brick and workspace. And then under there, we have the color value we can just choose whatever color you would want your admin to be, your basic admin. Maybe I want it to be a light pink color. And you see we get these three values here. We get 252, 79, and 254. Well, we can actually insert those values here to make that the color of our admin GUI. So if I set this color, you always want to have this added to 255. So the first number that by default is 31, I'll change that to my first number over here. So 252. And then 79 is my second number. Again, you have to leave that out of 255 because that's how Roblox colors work. Uh, and then 254 is my last one. And if we go into the game, you actually, we can, I can show you. Uh, it'll come up in the corner. It'll be a pink UI instead of, see, it's pink instead of the default gray color. Now let's look. So we also have the tools localization. So all this means is when so the player runs colon tools in the game or they run the tools command, this is the folder that it will grab the tools from that they can give. So let's say we wanted to have custom tools in our game. If we wanted to put those tools under lighting, right, maybe we have tool one and maybe we have tool two. Well, by default, it's not in lighting that it grabs the tools from from the admin. So we can change this value right here to wherever our places that our tools are located. So in this case, it's game.lighting. So we can change it to game.lighting. And when we run tools in game, when we run the tools command, tool one and tool two will come up so that we can give them to each other. Um, command confirmation. Uh, commands that are possibly abusive that use uh, all the players or they reference all the players in some way. I have this set to false, but if you have it set to true, it'll ask the command runner for a confirmation before it actually executes the command. Just in case maybe you typed it by accident or somebody's name began with all and you typed it like that. Um, and finally, we have the data store key. And this basically is where all of the data for ad the admin is stored. So the cape data, band data, any admin data, people that are admin, all this is stored under the data store key. So we could change this key to whatever we want. So we could say, hello, this is my data store key. But you have to be careful when changing it because anytime that you change this, it'll reset all of your basic admin um, commands. So it's basically like you're inserting the model right back in. It resets all of your admins, all of your bands, anything that's not specified in this configuration file that was put in through the data store it'll reset it if you change the data store key so you just have to be careful with that so adding admin commands is really important to your game if you want to have administrative privileges over your players thank you so much for watching guys i hope you learned something new today about scripting on roblox as always i'll have the model link for this basic admin in the description and i'll see you later